Welcome to CA Raja classes. This video is shot on 1st April 2023 that is on the first day of financial year. So what we are going to learn on the first day financial discipline. Financial discipline is the key for long term success let it be business or even personal finance. So in this video I will take you through four critical aspects. I request all of you to make a note of it. So please go take your notepad and pen, make a note of them. Let's get into the video. So what are those four aspects related to financial discipline I mentioned earlier? It is number one budgeting, number two cash flow management, number three cost management and number four risk management. Let's take up budgeting first. Budgeting is one of the key elements of financial discipline. What is required here is effective budgeting. So when I say budgeting, it is the process of creating a plan. Plan for what? Plan for allocating the financial resources over a specific period. So when we create a plan for allocating the financial resources, we have to ensure that plan is as realistic as possible. And that plan should be aligned with the goals of the business. So for all this what is required is effective budgeting. Let me share some tips for effective budgeting. Number one, when you start preparing budget, ensure you have clear understanding of goals and objectives of your business. Okay, because if your budget is going to deviate or if it is not going to be in sync with goals and objective, then it is not going to help in achieving financial discipline. Number two, you have to determine your revenue streams and projected expenses. This is very important because only then we'll know what amount of cash inflows we can expect from basic revenue. For that, we should know what are the different types of revenue channels, revenue streams we have. So from each and everything or each and every stream, what is the possibility? And when you do this further, you get to know what are the areas that are even underutilized or what are the areas where there is more scope for making additional revenue. Everything will come to light. Similarly, you should also project your expenses. I mean, uh, you cannot be like, uh, I will get more inflows and I will have lesser outflows. No, you should be as realistic as possible as far as the expenses are concerned as well. Only then you will be able to have a realistic picture. When you do this, break down your expenses. Break down your expenses by category. So typically what we do in financial statement, try to bring that process so that it will be more realistic. It will be in sync with our financial statements also that will enable comparisons. And number four, you have to set priorities. Because you will have n number of demands for expenses, n number of demand for investments. So on which you are going to commit your money, where you are going to allocate your fund, which one should be given priority. So you have to rank them. So what is important is priority. You have to rank them. Which one should be taken up first, second, third. Okay. Then number five, monitor your budget. If you are just going to create budget and if you are going to leave it, then it is as good as not creating any budget at all. You have to monitor this. You have to monitor this on a regular basis, regular basis and whenever required, wherever required at reasonable intervals, it has to be adjusted. Let's say you are preparing budget for one full year. So after three months when you review and if the macro scenarios have undergone a significant change, then you have to modify your budget as well. Number six is avoid common budgeting mistakes. The common budgeting mistakes is when they estimate expenses, they'll underestimate it. And when they estimate income, they'll overestimate it. This is very common. Okay. So avoid common budgeting mistake of underestimating expenses, overestimating income, and sometimes certain expenses will not be accounted at all. Okay. Try to avoid all those. So in this way, if you can prepare a budget, let's say for one year, and if you can break that down into quarterly or even monthly budget, then that will give you clarity as to how your next month is going to be or how your current month is going to be and whether you will have a shortage position in terms of cash or surplus position 
and if it is going to be shortage how you should manage that shortage what are the steps you should take and if it is going to be surplus what you can do with that surplus whether you should park it temporarily in some short term investments or you should think of utilizing that for long term purposes all those decisions can be taken all those steps can be taken okay and this will bring in financial discipline because you know what to expect you know where to spend and if you are not going to deviate from that then that ensures you are in sync with goals and objectives and that ensure you are committing yourself to financial discipline this is aspect number 1 number 2 is cash flow management cash flow management is basically the process of monitoring and optimizing the inflow and outflow of cash in your business unit so it is a process of monitoring the inflow and outflow of cash in your business unit not only monitoring but also optimizing so every business should have a proper cash flow management only then that business will be able to ensure that it has adequate resources which are required to operate the business as well as grow the business let me share some tips for effective cash flow management number 1 as discussed earlier where we talked about budgeting having a cash flow forecast is very important cash flow forecast is basically part of budgeting and this cash flow forecast will communicate what are going to be the inflows what are going to be the outflows and that will give a clear picture for us number 2 you have to monitor receivables because receivables are result of credit sales they are supposed to be realized within the credit period if the realization is not going to happen within the credit period then that will put liquidity strain on the business so you have to monitor the receivables you have to collect the receivables on time to ensure liquidity in your business number 3 you have to manage payables when i say manage payables you have to negotiate credit terms with your supplier so that your business has some liquidity you have to negotiate payment terms in such a way that you also get some discount you have to negotiate in such a way that your payments are given priority it means they are not uh, going to stress you or push you for payments but they give you some liberal payment period actually in financial management we say we have to accelerate the collections and decelerate the payments so this should be structured and taken care number 4 you should ensure your business maintain sufficient cash reserves to cover unexpected expenses this is very much required because there are certain expenses which will arise and we may not be aware of it at all at the time we cannot say we don't have cash to meet business related expenses so always maintain sufficient cash reserves number 5 review and adjust your cash flow management strategy on a regular basis like i as i said for budgeting here also even if you prepare it for one year review it review it at monthly intervals or quarterly intervals and make changes depending upon the changes in the overall macro environment which could influence your business avoid this mistake the mistake of utilizing the short term funds for long term purposes if you are going to raise a lot of short term funds for your business then that will put your business under tremendous pressure okay so let's move on to the third part cost management effective cost management is very much required that will help you to optimize your business resources that will help your business to maximize the profits as well and let's look at some tips identify and prioritize cost by category it can be like fixed cost variable cost do that number 2 develop a cost reduction strategy that can balance cost cutting with maintaining quality number 3 regularly review and optimize your supplier relationship so that you can negotiate better price terms number 4 monitor and track expenses on an ongoing basis basically to identify opportunities for cost savings number 5 use technology and automation to streamline the processes and reduce cost number 6 avoid common cost management mistakes like uh, failing to analyze and optimize cost uh, or cutting cost too deeply or neglecting to invest in areas that are really critical to long term success Okay so these are all about cost management and number 4 we'll move on to risk management risk management involves 
identifying, assessing and managing the potential risk that could impact your business. So if you have effective risk management in place that will help you to reduce the potential losses and it will also protect your business's financial health. And let's look at some tips for effective risk management. Number one, you have to identify and assess the potential risk. It can be market risk, operational risk, financial risk, but you have to identify and assess them. Number two, you have to develop a risk management plan that should outline how to mitigate or how you should respond to each type of risk. Number three, you should monitor and assess the risk on ongoing basis. This is basically to ensure that your plans are remaining effective. Number four, you should maintain sufficient insurance coverage. This is basically to protect against potential losses. Number five, you should develop a contingency plan basically to ensure your business can continue to operate even if something unexpected happens. Number six, you should avoid common risk management mistakes like uh, failing to identify risk, failing to assess risk or neglecting to develop a risk management plan or failing to update the plan on a regular basis. Thank you so much. I hope now you appreciate why these four parameters are very important. If you like this video, hit on the like button and share button. And if you wish to explore more, check out our channel. We have 2000 plus video lectures related to banking, credit and finance.